Praise the Lord, saints. Amen. We pray right now that everyone, as you log in, make sure you give your friends, your family uh, a call and let them know that they can uh, start a watch party. Let them know that they can uh, like, share, whatever they need to do. Praise right? the Lord, saints. Because the word Amen. of God is going to go we out tonight. Right now that everyone, uh, as you log in, make sure you give your friends, your family uh, a call and let them know that they can start a watch party let them know that they can like share whatever they need to do praise the lord because the amen. word of god is going to go we out tonight now that everyone uh, as you log in make sure you give your friends your family uh, a call and let them know that they can uh, start a watch party let them know that they amen. can like, share, whatever they need to give praise the few minutes to the word of God is going to go we out just thank God for tonight. Uh, as we, log in, we just give you make sure you give the, the highest welcome that we can give you. Uh, we thank God for this moment, just for you being start in the watch presence watch tonight. Because, because we know in his presence there's fullness of joy. Whatever they need to give so right now we want to experience the fullness of joy. We just thank God for tonight. We just thank you right now, God. We thank you for the highest welcome because you platform that we have for tonight. Amen. Uh, it has been so effective in these last months. We know that it's so wise not to use it. But to the right now, we say, we thank God for the true love delivers church. We thank God for this past right now. Pastor, I thank you for Larry. Amen. Everybody knows me. I am the sister pastor. Pastor Harvey. I just thank God for the love you and for you and not only Church here in Birmingham, Alabama, 1520 18th Street, North Birmingham, Alabama, 35234. Uh, we bring you greetings tonight. Amen. Uh, be because we're not in the four walls does not mean the word of God cannot go forward. So we are here tonight to celebrate, to educate, and relate the word of God to you all tonight. excited. Thank you all so much for joining us. As Pastor um, Pastor Harris stated that, you know, we're not actually in the four walls, but that does not mean that the gospel is not going forth. To me, the gospel is going forth in a greater uh, way than ever before. I mean, you know, normally you would get, hypothetically speaking, of you know, the same people coming to church, but guess what? He's opened up the floodgates of heaven where the gospel is going forth mightily so we just thank god that he has done that so tonight we're here to celebrate we're just excited to yeah, to man. go from 20 to 2020 to 2021 and yes. what god is going to do in 21 is even greater i know that some people say 2020 was it, it was it was a doozy as we can say it but you know god is still god and god is still in control no matter yes. what has happened he is still in control yes so we just thank God for you all being present. Uh, have you introduced the, the, the guest? Amen. I, I want to introduce the, the, the guests that we have tonight. Uh, some awesome men and women of God. Amen. Um, first of all, there's Pastor William. Uh, let me excuse, excuse me. Reverend William Coates uh, from Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church in Marbury, Maryland. Amen. Amen. Uh, we welcome him tonight. Amen. Uh, Y'all know these two, amen. They are so famous in the city of Birmingham. Absolutely. Amen. Uh, Deacon Vincent 
and Minister Francine Larry from True Love Deliverance the Church. Part of the ministry. Amen. Woo -woo. Amen. Uh, man, how y'all doing? Uh, a good friend of mine, amen, Pastors Rick and Trina Frost uh, from Daring to Believe Ministries uh, in Port St. Lucie, Florida. <laughs> Amen. Resort area. Oh, everyone. everyone. Look it up. Amen. And also, uh, somebody that I've seen grow and uh, this awesome man of God, he married an awesome woman of God. Uh, Pastors Ray and KB Gaines uh, from Alive Church International in South Euclid, Ohio. Amen. I welcome all of you all tonight. Amen. 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 And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get started. So you should you have you should have time uh, have had time to start your watch party to like and all of that. So we're going to go ahead and get started, and we're going to start with this awesome man of God, uh, Reverend William Coates. Amen. 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 God bless you. Bless you. God bless you. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within Amen. me. Bless right. his holy and righteous name. Amen. I am uh, ecstatic and happy to be with you tonight. Thank you, Pastor Horace and, and Sister Val and the True Love Deliverance uh, Incorporated Church for the invitation. Um, I, I am excited when we come uh, to the word of God. This is it. This is uh, the last um, uh, a night of 2019. Blessed be to God that we made it uh, through so far. Um, if I if I had to, you know, uh, Pastor Horace kind of cut my legs off. He said, "Only get 10 minutes," but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I can what I can do what God has given me to do uh, in this season for tonight. So if you have your Bibles, there is a, a quick scripture reference that I, I would like to entertain, and it comes from 2 Corinthians, um, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9, a very popular, a very popular passage. It says in, uh, in uh, verse 7, 8, and 9, I'm sorry, it says, but we have treasures in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Amen. The Lord, uh, the grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God uh, shall stand forever. Um, with 2020 almost gone, Almost, I mean, just a few more hours and, and, and the days of uh, 2020 will be in the bag and we're going to celebrate a new year. Uh, a new decade begins. And I, I don't know about you, but there were a few times in 2020 that I wanted to throw in the bag. I mean, I, I really uh, gathered some of my uh, church leaders together and I, I, I had my hands up and crying out, Lord, how long? I mean, I felt like, uh, I, I felt like uh, um, Haggai. I felt like, uh, you know, some of them old prophets that got to the wit's end with dealing with the children of Israel and just said, Lord, how long? How long will we be persecuted? How long will uh, we be uh, uh, chastised? How long? I mean, all, from, from the political arena through the, this pandemic that we have been in, I was really uh, ready to give up. I just heard on the news today that uh, yesterday and today that in New York City, uh, there is a, uh, in Times Square, they have what they call the good riddance box. Where you can take your cares and take your problems and take your issues from the previous year, take it to Times Square and they will shred them for you in hopes that they won't reappear in the new year, I, I, I don't. I don't want to be uh, uh, someone that brings bad news, but but let me tell you, if you if you go to bed with pennies in your pocket tonight, uh, I almost guarantee you're going to wake up tomorrow uh, with the same pennies in your pocket. I I, 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 don't, I don't know who I'm, who I'm who I'm preaching this to, but if you go to bed with the same problems that you've had all year long, yeah. tomorrow morning the 
It's the same problems that's going to be there. I, 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 don't, I don't know about you. When we wake up in the morning on January the 1st, this new year that we've looked forward to all year long, I mean, I, I don't know about you, guys, but, but I've had some deaths in my family from COVID. I, I, I don't know about you, but I, I've had, so I had to preach some funerals uh, because of this disease and other things. I, I don't know about, about my, my, my children. Uh, uh, some of them have lost their jobs. Uh, I mean, it hit home. And I've been looking forward to the new year, but I realized that tomorrow morning, if I didn't have a job today, I, I'm I'm not going to have a job uh, tomorrow. If, if I, you know, if if I'm if I'm sick right now, um, uh, I, I might feel a little bit better tomorrow, but I'm going to have the same same sickness. But the Bible tells us that we can be perplexed, but not in despair. That we we can be persecuted, but are not forsaken, cast down, uh, Paul wrote, but not destroyed. Because even though I felt like giving up in 2020, I knew that God had my back. I, even though I, I felt like, man, I can't take it no more, I knew that God was still in control of the situation. I knew that all I had to do was hold on a little while longer. And he would make, he said he was going to make my enemies my footstools. There were times when, when even as a pastor, even as a preacher, I had to go into my closet and preach it to myself. He that dwelleth in the secret place, Psalm says, of the most high shall abide under the arms, under the wings of the almighty. I wish I had some folks that could, I, I, I wish, I wish we were in those four walls of vow where we could just shout and 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 praise God and shout for glory. But you know what? He, he says that uh, uh, where two or three are gathered, he dwells in a mist. So I, I hate when folks say, I can't wait till the church opens back up because if I'm going to praise him, I'm going to praise him right now. If I'm going to shout hallelujah, I'm going to shout hallelujah right now because tomorrow is not promised. We look forward to 2021, but let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters, it's not promised. So don't wait till the building opens back up. Hallelujah. Because the church is still right. Don't wait till they open the doors back up because the church is still open. The church has not, the people have never closed. That's right. Preachers still preaching. Babies are still being born. Uh, yes, funerals are still going on. Yes, uh, we've had folks join our church even though the building was shut down. Amen. So uh, if I had to give this a subject, if I had to give my, my, my 10 minute uh, sermon a subject, I would, I would probably the say- Lord have his way. <laughs> I would probably say we made it by the grace of God. Death all around us, but we made it by the grace of God. Uh, uh, we didn't get here by ourselves. What what's what happened when our neighbor got sick, but the death angel passed by our house? What what happened when my cousin uh, uh, passed away, but somehow God spared me? Let me tell you something: you didn't get here by yourself. The Israelites who lived in the days of the prophet Amos felt that because of their strategic location, their economic prosperity, and their military might, that they had made it on their own. Let me tell you, when you start thinking that you got through 2020 by yourself, that's dangerous thinking. That's a danger. You, you can go back to the history of the, of the Israelites and find out what happened to the kings uh, that, that thought they had made it uh, by themselves. So we should be careful about a saying that we made it, but institute that I made it because of the grace of God. Because by the grace of God, I, I, I know I'm going to make, look, if COVID takes me out, I'll be praising up in heaven. If, if I get sick, I know that God has the power to heal me. If, if anything comes, I, I know that God has me in his hands and nobody can pluck me out. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care how much Bible you know. I'm sure there's some scholars down in in Alabama, I'm sure there's some scholars over in St. Lucia, Florida. I'm sure there's some scholars out in Ohio. So I'm not really worried about how much 
a Bible, you know, I, it don't matter how strong you are, how much prayed up you are, how, how much life has a tendency to hit you. Uh, it don't matter uh, what how big you think you are. You know, it only takes a little, you know, if you saw the virus, it only, it only takes a little bit to knock you off your game and knock you off your feet. And you can't say, but I made it by myself because by the grace of God, we all made it. So by the grace of God, we're right here, right now. And if we were to search the word of God, we would find no person in better position to say, but by the grace of God, but uh, no, none other than Paul. You see, after his, uh, after his conversion on the Damascus Road, uh, the rest of his life was a constant series of knockdowns and recoveries. At, at Lystra, he was stoned and left to die. In Philippi, he was beaten and thrown in jail. There, there was a conspiracy against him in Ephesus, and uh, he had to be hustled out of jail in Jerusalem to escape an angry mob. But after each incident, he said, in essence, but by the grace of God, I made it through. But listen, church, listen to the beautiful language that Paul writes right here in this second letter of Corinthians. I'm almost done. He employs a series of contradictory statements to express the situation that he was in and the situation that we are in tonight, in this year. He said, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down even, but not destroyed. In other words, through all that we have been going through, through all the uh, weapons, the, those that are imagined and those that were imaginable, we can still say, by the grace of God, I made it through. Not on my own merit, not, not on my own wit, not on my own know-how. I can't make a vaccination, but not on my own ingenuity, but, but by the grace of God, we made it through. You see, we are who we are. We are who, who God has ordained us to be. I, I have what I have. I, I know what I know. I, 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 just four walls that I'm in right now, not because I built it myself, but by uh, the grace of God. Let's take a brief look at these powerful words that Paul said, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be done. He's, he says, in, in the enormity of his opposition, he says, we are troubled on every side. He said, we are perplexed and we are persecuted. We are cast down. Think about these negative statements. See, to be troubled means to be harassed. Paul says to be perplexed means he's been a little confused. He, he knew that the anointed wanted to warn others in, of the impending dangers, but Paul said he was persecuted. I wonder if anybody listening tonight have ever been perplexed this year, have ever thought they were being persecuted this year. I don't know if anybody ever had any lies told about them. Every effort was made to keep folk down this year, but by the grace of God. Let me, let me say that again. Some efforts were made to keep some folk down, but by the grace of God. So we can identify with Paul when he, we are troubled on the other side. We can relate to him when he says we are perplexed. We, can, we, we know what it means to be a persecutor, to be cast down. We have traveled some of those same roads that Paul traveled. And just like him, hallelujah, but by the grace of God. But thank you, Jesus, we made it through. The mountains got a little uh, steep, but somehow uh, uh, we made it through. Uh, sometimes our friends and our family made us cry, but still, somehow we made it through. I had to drink from that old bitter cup, but somehow uh, I made it through. Folks even lied on me, but uh, somehow I made it through. How did we make it? Uh, let me tell you how. The songwriter says, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. He says, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Through dangers and toils and snares, I have already come towards grace that brought me thus, saved thus far, and grace will lead me home. Well, maybe, maybe you don't know that one, but there was an, another songwriter that said, what a friend ah, we have in Jesus. 
all our sins and griefs to bear, or what privilege it is to carry everything, COVID-19, everything, death, uh, uh, everything, sickness, everything, cancer, everything, diabetes, everything, heart, uh, blood pressure, everything, heart disease, everything, arthritis, everything. Ha, ah, to God in prayer. My brothers and my sisters, somehow we made it, and it's not a mystery, but by the grace of God. Hallelujah. God bless you, my friends. May heaven smile upon you. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Can I pray for just for real quick, Brother Horace? Yes. Amen. Father God, we come to you right now thanking you, O oh Lord. For we know, O oh God, if, if we have any sense whatsoever, we know that we did not make it through 2020 on our own. And Lord, as we look forward to the promise, as we look forward to you, O oh God, revealing yourself to us even more in 2020, 2021, O oh God. Oh Lord, whatever you're doing in this next season, please don't do it without me. Please don't do it without us, O oh God. We give you praise, glory, praise, glory, and honor because you are deserving of that and so much more. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much. You're muted, Pastor Horace. Awesome word, Rem Coates. Awesome word. Amen. Uh, amen. Um, you know, Rem Coates has a much nice service. Please, we're going to be praying for you, Rem Coates. Amen. And we just thank you for sharing your time and allowing God to use you. We made it by the grace of God. We made it by the grace of God. Amen. So you be blessed at Rev Coast. Amen. Amen. Um, the, next, the next two that we're going to bring up, amen, is, is uh, we know them also well. Amen. Uh, I call them my AA. Uh, Minister Francine and one of the hardest working men in church business, uh, Deacon Vincent Larry. Amen. From True Love Deliverance Church. Amen. Amen. Let's welcome them. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. All right, Reverend. He's brought us some good word. We've made it by grace. God Amen. is good all the time. All the time. God is good. We thank God for being in the place today. Amen. We don't take it lightly that he's given us breath in our bodies. Um, We do bring you greetings to True Love Delivers Church. I'm here with Deacon Vincent Larry, my husband. Um, and I just thank God for just having a, a mind just to really just to be in his will and be in his, you know, his presence, his Amen. atmosphere. Amen. Um, just the touch of his love is enough for me mm -hmm. to know that if I go through anything, he still loves me. Amen. If I mess up yesterday, if I mess up in five minutes, he still loves me. Amen. So I need to know that. And I need for everyone else to know that God loves you in spite of and he wants us to have a relationship with him we don't want to go into year 2021 without knowing our lord and savior he don't want nobody to perish he don't want nobody to be lost mm -hmm. and i just want to encourage you today um mm -hmm. with psalms 100 said make a joyful noise unto the lord mm -hmm. all ye land and Serve the Lord with us. Come for his presence with singing. Know that ye the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not ourselves. We are his people Amen. and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and unto his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. So if you got a voice today, you need to shout hallelujah, hallelujah. anyhow. Amen. You need to say thank you, Jesus. As the pastor was before us was in it, but God is still with us. He never leave us, never forsake us. He don't turn his back on us. His ears incline to our prayers. All we got to do is call upon the Lord. Let him show us great and mighty things Amen. that eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. We enter to the hearts of men that love him. We love the Lord with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul. 
We want all of our generations to be saved. We want this nation to be saved. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem over this nation. We need God to come in like a flood in the night to really turn us back from our sins. Repent. We need a spirit of repentance. We need God to move on our hearts. Amen. We need a change of mind. in mind we need the mind of christ in this world we we want to be what god called us to be and that's some that's some forerunners for christ giving out the word of god because we know not the day or the hour that he shall appear and we want to be ready god prepare us for your kingdom because we need you lord and we want everybody if you don't know the lord you don't know jesus christ we ask you to have him to come into your life. We don't want nobody to miss out. When 1201 hit January 1st, we want to know that your soul has been anchored in the body of Christ, Amen. that you have made it to the kingdom. God has given us another chance. His mercies are new every morning, but don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted because nobody knows. The breath that he's given us, he said we should praise him, worship him, honor him at all times. He said a praise should be in my mouth at all times. You got to give him glory. You got to give him honor, what's due to him, because he made us, we didn't make ourselves. We are his sheep. Thank God for him being the shepherd of our souls. We ask that you just continue to be blessed, to be encouraged. We love you and God loves you even more. And may God bless you and happy new year. And I'm going to have my husband. <laughs> Come on. She's putting me on the spot, but <laughs> just piggyback off my wife this year. You know what, regardless of what's going on, 2020 is here. It's been to go. And with some of the things that we got in 2020, we'll be carrying over to 2021. But just, just assured that God is with you. He loved you. But while you still got a chance, while we still got a chance, we need to get our life right. We need to get our love right with our family, with our loved ones. I speak highly on family and love and enjoying your wife. You know, we, 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 we can, you can make yourself sick when you can, when you worry about this and that, but we know we're just here for a moment. We are just here for a second because only God have to say so. We wonder why this person is leaving here and why I'm not, I'm still here, but only God can um, determine it. But while we're here, we need to give him the praise. We need to praise him like we have lost our, our mind. We, you know, we didn't have so much, you know, doing the, um, our church was battleized, you know, but guess what? God's still going to give the glory. You know, every, every time my wife come home, she's, she have a different outcome on her job. You know, they didn't cut some of our pay, but guess what? We still going to give God the glory. We don't know the time of the hour. You know, we don't know. So that's why we have to always give him the glory and be prepared and ready. He said, be ready. I'm going to come. When he comes, you we got to be ready and we got to know who our father is. Our father said, Hi, he loves us. His son died on the cross. And I, and I always think about Job. You know what? Job could be a, a he's he's an example. He the when he went through he lost everything. He lost his family, he lost his, he lost everything. And you know what? Job had to end up encouraging himself. That's what we have to do. We got to encourage ourselves. Regardless of nobody that we got to encourage ourselves. Joe had to had to tell his wife no. He had to tell his friends no. He had to encourage himself. And guess what? God gave it all back to him. He lost everything. We can lose one cent and we cry because the because the government giving us this and giving us that. But what are you doing with that stimulus? Are you using it for the for the kingdom of God? Are you using it wisely? But when God is blessing you, you got to be ready. Our God love us. We love you. And you know what? I always talk about it. Through this uh, COVID-19, you know, I said, I love getting locked up with my wife. But we find out now, I said, you know, I talk about this. Why are we getting mad at each other? Why our husband and wife are just find out about it? So I've been married to my wife 31 years. You mean tell me I'm just finding out about, about what's my wife? We got to realize who our God is. We got to know who we are. I told my wife, I'm, I'm going to remarry you all over again because I love her. That's what God wants. He wants that love. He wants that love that he put his son on that cross. When that man was on that cross, he said, God, uh, uh, Jesus, remember me. And instant, he was saved and he went with the Lord. And we don't have to go with the Lord too. But I just want y'all to know to be blessed. I, I, I hope we have said something to encourage you. We don't want to go too, go too long because it's so much to be said. I got other people I want to hear that's on this on this uh, YouTube, on, the, on this, uh, what you call it? 
Yeah, thank you, man. Because I'm telling you, when I get wound up, I just keep it real, ladies and gentlemen. When I get wound up, but I just want to let you know I got some more. I, well, I know we got some more good speakers, and I want to sit back and relax. I thank you all. I thank uh, Horace and and and, and Sister Val and well, Mr. Bower and, and Mr. Horace for for allowing this. You know, we we it's gonna be big and better. It's gonna get big and better. Some, it's just a trial. Everything is a trial. But be ready when he put it out there. You don't never know where it's gonna go. We don't know where it's gonna lead. But we can always put God first. Put Him first. Put Him on that pedestal. And I guarantee you, you will not go wrong. Amen. Amen. So we want to pray for those ones that are not saved and pray for the ones that are saved, that they will continue to draw strength, draw Amen. peace, draw comfort, and draw salvation. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you, give you praise, honor, and glory. Lord, we ask you right now to touch the hearts, the mind, the soul of your people, oh God. Those ones that are lost, oh God, we ask you right now that you would pour out your spirit on all flesh, oh God. Lord, that you would save them, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, the ones that are already saved, we ask you to give them strength, peace, comfort, Lord God, in your word daily, Lord God. Lord, for God, open up our spiritual ears to hear from you, oh God. Open our spiritual eyes to see what you see in the spirit realm. Oh God. Yes, Lord, don't let us get down, get complex, Lord God. Because you said the greater one is on the inside of us, oh God. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, oh God, that lead, guide, and direct. Yes. We thank you for being our everlasting Father, our mighty Prince of Peace. We thank you for being our mighty counsel that you are. And we give you all the praise, all the glory, and we declare and decree soul salvation to be done. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. We're just excited. Thank uh, Minister Fran and Deacon Larry for that word. For those that don't know, that is my big brother. Um, a man after God's own heart, I'm telling you. And, and he has an awesome wife. We love you all dearly. Thank you all so much for what you do for the ministry. We love you. Praise God for that encouraging word. If you want some real talk, call Deacon Larry. Real talk. I'm telling you, he, he keeps it real. No, no sugar. Oh, he just keeps it real. We're going to ask now that uh, we're excited about Pastor Rick and Trina Fro uh, Frost. Yes. From Daring to Believe Ministries out of Florida. We're excited. Um, this is what I think Horace should, should uh, introduce him because he's <laughs> one of Horace's co old co-workers. <laughs> yeah. This I love you. Love you too. I'm not gonna hold that against you, but this is this is uh, you know, um, throughout this walk in life, we we meet a lot of people. Uh, uh, Reverend Coates, the, uh, the awesome man of God that spoke first. Um, me and he was in the Marine Corps together. Uh, we were instructors together, and uh, when I started working at the railroad, uh, I was there for a while, and I met another awesome Marine. And his name is Pastor Rick Frost. You know, it's a, it's amazing how you can meet someone and automatically you can tell uh, what their spirit is like because when your spirit meets their spirit and it's pleasant, you know that there's there's something going on going on there. It's no animosity. Uh, you can tell by the the conversations you have. Um, it was always awesome. I worked with this man at the railroad for years wow. until he left. Uh, it really broke my heart when he left. Uh, but he did uh, He did speak some things into my life before he left. And I spoke some things into his life. And uh, he know what I'm trying to say. Uh, but uh, when we, we, we was getting up this team, uh, tonight, uh, Pastor Rick Frost and his wife, uh, Pastor Trina, uh, they immediately came across our hearts and our minds. And uh, so without further ado, we're going to hear from Pastors Rick and Trina Frost. Amen. Mm, hallelujah. Man, I am fired up. I am fired up. Man, these are tough acts to follow, right? Listen, hey, Horace, Valerie, I appreciate you guys so much. This is, this is to me, this is what it's all about, right? This is about getting together, stirring each other up, getting us fired up, getting each other fired up, getting believers fired up, and getting the word of God to people who are dying, who are uh, in pain and stressed out, right? That's what 2020, that's the theme of 2020. 
And, and, and if you have your Bibles, my verse, my conquer verse, my concrete verse is going to be Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Now, before I go into that, I wanted to talk. I don't need to list off all the stuff that, that 2020 has tried to come after us about, do I? The stress, the panic, the job loss, the COVID, the deaths, the fear. I don't need to, I, I'm not going to sit here and glorify the devil. I'm just not going to do it. What I'm going to do is say that this has been an evil year or in what Ephesians chapter six, verse 13 says, an evil day. Let me read this to you real quick, right? Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, not just part of it, right? The whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in that evil day, right? Or evil year, right? So we're taking up the whole armor of God. And then after you've done all of that, after having done all to stand, what's the first two words in verse 14 say? Stand, therefore. What's that telling you? Keep standing. What are you standing in? The grace of God, right? The grace of God. Mighty, whole, forgiving, loving, that, that, that just gets me stirred up. It gets me stirred up. So, and, and, and I was going through, and I'm going to try to do this in 10 minutes. If I can't, then it's okay, right? Because we're getting stirred up. The, the word of God is inside of us. The Holy Spirit's getting us stirred up. So, so I was trying to think about this, and I was praying about it. And, and I, I think that the enemy knows there's something great coming up. Great coming up with the church. Great coming up with me, my wife, and you, right? And winning the lost. He's scared, folks. He's scared. Why? Because I think he's us underestimated the church. Underestimated the church. What's he doing? Oh, they're not going to go to church. They're not going to go to the building. What are we doing right now? We're having church. Where are the walls? I don't care about any walls. We're fellowshipping with each other. We're telling each other, hey, get stirred up, get fired up. And listen, what's God have his foot? His foot is on the devil's neck, right? So we need to have our foot on the devil's neck. How do we know we could do that? What's Romans 8, chapter uh, 8, verse 11 say? We have the same spirit in us that raised God or Jesus from the dead. We have dead raising people spirit inside of us because of the grace of God. I'm going to steal it. That, you didn't, you didn't, uh, <laughs> you didn't patent that, did you, pastor? I'm going to, but by the grace of God, we, normal folks, sinners, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, yes, I, I may sin, but I am the righteousness of God. How can I do that? He made somebody who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We, as the church, not the building, have our foot on the devil. But what do we got to do? We got to stop being complacent. We have got to use the stress, the panic, and the fear as the bridge from 2020 to 2021 and use that as an opportunity folks for our victory our victory in jesus christ and the blood that gives us that victory and we gotta get the devil running scared folks i think he knows something's coming he knows something tough doesn't he doesn't he doesn't he know and we feel that in the spirit realm we feel that and we we have we have been preparing ourselves we have been studying the word. We've been talking to people. We've been preaching. We've been witnessing. And if you haven't, we'll pray for you because there's people at Walmart that need some prayer, folks, right? They, you get out there. They need to be, listen, if you've got prayer requests, uh, Pastor Horace will give you my email. I'll pray for you. I got nothing but time. I got nothing but time. But that's that's what we need to do. I I, I just, in, in my spirit, I felt whenever you've done everything else, keep standing keep standing. We have 
the victory. I want to read one more passage to you. And this is the Bible. You guys don't worry, worry you know, you, you don't mind me reading the Bible, do you? <laughs> All right, Ephesians chapter one, Ephesians chapter one talks about the power that God gave his son, Jesus Christ. In verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places, right? Woo! <laughs> far above, far above all principality and power and might and dominion in every name, that shall be named. What is COVID? It's a name. What is fear? It's a name. What is panic? What is, it's a name. We, through Jesus Christ, have authority over every name that is named. And with Jesus, we are seated at the right hand of God. And we have that power over every name. Not only in this age, but also in 2021, right? It's that, yes, we will wake up in the morning and we will have the same issues and the same attacks from the enemy, maybe the same pennies, the same, but we have the same God, the same power, and we have the same authority over that devil in Jesus' name. And he is not going to take our, our joy. He's not going to take our peace. And I believe what the what the, the, the minister was just saying ago, you're, you could you could take faith all day long, but if you ain't walking in love, it's not going to mean anything, right? We may have been lied on. We may have been cheated on. We may have lost our jobs. We have, we, 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 we even know people who got COVID. I, myself, my wife are blessed. We haven't re we've gotten that. We're not going to get it in Jesus' name. But there are, <laughs> there are people that I know that have that. But that doesn't mean that we have lost that, that, that war, right? We have the authority in Jesus' name. Not only that is this age, but all, uh, also in which is to come. And he put all things, all things, watch this, under his feet. And I just love the thought of me putting my foot on the devil's neck in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And, and under his feet. And gave him to be head over all things to the church. And who's the church? Who's the church? Which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Mm. When you've done everything to stand, stand. But what I want to ask you right now, I want to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Have you allowed that peace to overwhelm you? Or has that fear gripped you? Has the panic gripped you? Has the stress gripped you? No matter what, lay at the feet of Jesus. Lay on his breast. Come to me who are weary and I will give you rest. Is that you? Because you can take the opportunity right now to say, yes, it has been me, but I have victory in Jesus. I don't have victory in myself. I don't have victory in what I can do or what I can accomplish, but I have the opportunity to step on the devil's neck through Jesus Christ, right? One more thing. Hebrews 10, 23 and 24, really quick. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. I think that this coming year is the year of the local church. Not the local, local buildings, but the local church. I think that this is the opportunity for us as Christians to step up and encourage one another, love on one another. If there's somebody else in the church that's falling, don't push them over. Love on them. 
Bring them up out of that ditch. Well, I'm better than that guy. Look at him. Look at what they're doing. No, that's not the fruits of the spirit. The fruits of the spirit, love, hope, peace, patience. That's a big one, right? <laughs> Spur one another on. In Jesus' name. My wife put something on Facebook. I want you to say really quick what you put on Facebook about everybody looking at the bad. But I just feel like this year, everybody's looked at everything that's bad. I mean, I know we've all gone through a lot. We've lost people that we loved. We've lost jobs. There's been a lot going on this year. But what I tried to concentrate on was all the good stuff. Um, I was sick for a week and a half, swore I had COVID, but I tested negative. Um, I also had my appendix out not long after that. So it's been a crazy year for all of us, but um, I just wanted to focus on all the things that were good. I mean, my son graduated high school early. My daughter's starting college in January. Um, my body is healed and God brought me through all that sickness and here I am. Mm -hmm. So um, I know it's easy to get caught up in that, but I want to know that walking into 2021, that we remember who we have the victory through and that that's our Lord. You know, mm. he, he brings that us through all of that. And we're always at the end. We're victorious with him, no matter what happens. Amen. Amen. 2021. Let me pray really quick. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that this message and the messages before me have, have stirred people up. And I pray for the people who have let fear and panic and stress get to them and just allow them the opportunity to realize that they don't need to handle it themselves, that they could use this as an opportunity for victory to Heavenly Father, but only through you. Urge them, Holy Spirit, to go to you and be a gentleman as you are and, and, and help them uh, get into the word and find friends to encourage them and stir them up to Heavenly Father, but just wrap your arms around them, wrap your love around them to Heavenly Father. And if they don't know you, as the minister before me was, was praying about, send laborers across their path to, to speak to them. And, and, and if you want to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, we'll talk about that at the end of this message, because I believe that that is the only way the only way to be able to have access for victory and the ability to put your foot on the devil's neck. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to mute myself now. <laughs> Thank you all so much. We love you all so much. Amen. Awesome word. Awesome, awesome. word. And I, Pastor Rick, I want to... Um, say something that you said about people was talking about, you know, going back. I can't wait to go back to church. We are the church. Yes. That's just a building. We are the church. That is a physical building. I'm in my home. These are four walls, the same four walls with the same material that we build the church. So if you're waiting to get back to church in the building to worship, then you've missed a whole lot. Yes. Amen. You've missed a whole lot. So the building is not it. The church is in us. Come on. And we're, we're, we're walking. The church is us, like you said, in the Walmarts, in the grocery stores, yes. in our community. We are the church, the ones that need to be getting the word out. Amen. Amen. So we thank you for your word. We thank you for your words of encouragement. And uh, we're just excited. We're excited about this whole Zoom call. And we're really excited about this. I'm really excited. Not that I'm not excited about everybody else, but I get excited about, not that we're old, but I, I get really excited when I see young people on fire for God. Yeah. When I tell you this couple, uh, can I go a little, go in a little, little Rayshon, can I go in a little bit? <laughs> yes, ma'am. My ahead. neighbor for a little bit. And I've watched him grow up to be an awesome man of God. Real oh. quiet, easygoing type of guy, didn't bother nobody. And now he stand before thousands and millions of people right. declaring, uh, declaring the word of the Lord. And we're so wow. excited about that great woman of God that sit next to him, Miss Pastor KB. She's so beautiful and 
talented in so many ways. She is. She is. She is. <laughs> she is. She is. Okay. And we're just excited about them, <laughs> how God has just blessed them to start their ministry this year Amen. during the pandemic. Yes. In COVID. So, in so COVID. you know, it's great things, Trina, that you mentioned is happening. Even yeah. in 2020, even in the pandemic, God is still doing some awesome things. So I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to uh, let Pastor Ray and Pastor KB come on from a live church international from Ohio. God bless you. Well, praise the Lord. Everybody it is uh, a blessing to be here. We do not take this for granted. I'm Pastor Ray and this is Pastor KB. Amen. <laughs> we love y'all tonight and uh, we just bless everybody who's watching. And thank you, Pastor Horace and um, Val, for having us. We really appreciate it. So let's get into this word. Um, I'm gonna, we want to go to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, uh, verses 14 through 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verses 14 through 17. Uh, this is the NIV version, so it's going to read a little bit differently. If you've got like a King James or Amplified. So this is Paul talking, and what he says is, for Christ's love compels us because we are convinced uh, that, one, that one died for all, and therefore all died. So in verse 14, Paul is saying that he's convinced that Christ, you know, died on the cross for everybody. And this conviction, it sits in the love of Christ. This conviction, um, it comes from the love of Christ. And those two things are powerful because, you know, the conviction that he's talking about, you can't, you can't prove a conviction. You can't reason with conviction. You can't debate against it because it's a conviction. And so as believers, we have to be in our, in our conviction about who Christ is. We got to know that he died on the cross for everybody and that for those who accept him, they died as well. And so verse 14 is so powerful because the two things that I want to bring out of that, uh, of that verse is our conviction about Christianity, about who we are in Christ, it sits in the love of Christ. It's a conviction. And so this is why you can't argue with people about what you believe about who God is, because it's a conviction. You can't go from, from reason to reason. You can't debate this. You can't argue with this, because this thing is it's a conviction. It's based out of an experience that I've had with him. Yeah, yeah. So verse 15, it says, and Christ died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Verse 15 says that because Christ died and once we receive him, we no longer have life. We don't have a life anymore. The life that we do have is the life that Christ has given us. And so this exchange, this exchange of lives, Christ basically says, I'm going to give you my life and you die with me. So that, that old man that you had, those old issues, uh, all of that, that insecurity that we struggle with, it is not legal spiritually, meaning that we might struggle with it, but technically he has given us a way out of, of, of all that drama, of all of the sin stuff, of all of the family issues. Christ has set us free. The mind, the mind keeps us in bondage. Yeah. The mind has not caught up with the fact that our spirits have had an experience with the savior. And so 15 is telling us that I don't have a life no more. <laughs> I, I don't have a life. My life is Christ. My life is him. When people see me coming, they should see, should is the key word. <laughs> they should see Christ. Yes. The love of God, signs, miracles, and wonders, the glory of God, the, the, the kindness of God, the patience of God, the fruit of the spirit. They should see who Christ is. And the issue is that so many people, so many believers have not caught hold of that truth yet. We still live and we still sitting on, the, on our own thrones. Mm -hmm. And Paul is saying, you have died with him. You died with him. You died with him. Your life is Christ. 16. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. The King James reads, we regard no person by the flesh. I think that's how I read the King James regard no man by the flesh, okay? Uh, though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. So 16 tells us that because we died with Christ, 
we can no longer regard people from a human standpoint anymore. Yeah. Something spiritual, something cataclysmic has happened. And I don't even know if we fully grasp what's happened with our spirits, with our souls, when we accepted who Christ is. Your life has been exchanged with his. And so that's why 16 says that from a worldly point of view, Horace and Val don't really exist no more. Rayshon and Christian, we died. For any true believer who was in this world, they died with Christ. And so their life is now hidden with God in Christ. So the worldly stuff and perceiving people from, oh, that's just Horace. That's just Val. No, they in the flesh. They, they haven't comprehended who you, who you are yet. Because when we see Horace and Val coming, we should, see, we should see the love of Christ. We should see the nature of who God is. We should see the kingdom coming. We should see miracles coming. We should see that there's another power in the earth and it's called the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so 17, let's go to 17. This is the verse that made me shout in my living room. <laughs> let's read it from the King James, baby. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Jesus. So let me read it from the NIV. NIV says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. Yes, God. Okay. So why was I shouting? Because basically it says that I don't have to wait till 2021 to shout, mm -hmm. to walk in newness of life, mm -hmm. to walk in signs, miracles, and wonders, to understand that because the kingdom is inside of me right now, I don't have to wait till, till every new year to get a fake new year's resolution going. I don't have to well, keep waiting and postponing what I think I'm gonna do. You know, we tricking ourselves with these resolutions. Now. Paul said the new creation is here right now. Yes, it's done. And so when are we gonna grab hold of that truth? We don't have to wait till 12 a.m. to praise him. We don't have to wait till 12 a.m. to understand that the kingdom is right here. It's in your heart, it's in your spirit. Your mind has to perceive this thing. Paul said, renew your mind every day. Yes. Not your spirit, because your spirit caught hold of Christ. But your mind is unrenewed. It's unregenerate. It, it's catching up mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to who Christ is. And so for, for this New Year's resolution, mm -hmm. how about this? Know that the new creation, the kingdom of God, the Holy Ghost, Christ, whatever you want to call it, is right here. Every second that you are alive, you should be walking in who you are in Christ. Yes. The wait is over. Stop waiting on every new year. Stop waiting on the future to come to rescue from your horrible present moment. God said, I've sent my son in your present to free you from the bondage of sin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's why we're shouting. Because it's time to understand that the old man has passed away. Behold, all things have become new yes. right now. The NIV picks up on the present moment right this second. Right this second, you are healed. And so, so the issue that people have with the healing is because they don't, sometimes they don't see it or they don't see it immediately or they don't feel like they heal. But see, here's the thing. You're healed because whether he does it for you or not, whether he heals you or not, he's still a healer. And so we always have to go with the character and the nature of God. Mm -hmm. We always have faith in who he is. We always have to hope, hope in the nature of Christ and the love of Christ despite our circumstances because Paul was right in 2 Corinthians under persecution sure and tribulation, he thought he was about to die. If you read the first chapter of 2 Corinthians, Paul said we was beaten. I thought I was going to die. But Corinthians, I love, I know I love y'all. He says, I love y'all because I'm still writing. I'm still being inspired by the Holy Ghost in prison, going through hell. Paul was going through hell and he was still decreeing that the new is here. Yeah. In a prison cell, if he can decree it from prison, we can surely decree it in our circumstances. Our circumstances ain't nearly as bad. And so 17, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that is a powerful scripture for the believer because it's time. It's time to grab hold of who, of who God is. It's time to grab hold to faith. The new man is here. The new creation is here. New, mi new mindset, your new finances, it's here right now. The wait is over. Stop waiting. 2021, it can't rescue you if you don't have the nature of who Jesus is. No new year can rescue you if you don't know who Christ is. If your spirit is dead, 
nothing can rescue you. If you have not crossed over from death to life, nothing can rescue you. The future cannot rescue you. That's why Paul says that he was convinced and the love of Christ was convincing the apostles that he died for everybody. Yes. He was convicted in his spirit by the love of Christ that Christ died for everybody. Yeah. And because of that, we owe our lives to him. We've made an exchange. And that exchange says that we have resurrection power right now. It's never in the future. It's never in the future. And so I want to encourage everybody today that we have to get into our present moment with the Holy Spirit. Because whatever you are in, God has the power to resurrect you up out of that thing this second, right this second. Because the kingdom is here. The kingdom is now. The new creation is now, according to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. That's a powerful scripture. Babe, you got anything to say? I'm going to just end on this. I've been at work today, and I didn't know what my husband was going to preach. But in the quick conversation, I was asked, since we're not in the four walls anymore, how are we going to infect people with Jesus? Wow. How are we going to uh, um, keep what we, what, what we do? You know, we got to keep on yeah. going. And my response was simply this. We are, it's the, it's the Jesus in us that people are supposed yes. to meet. Yes. When they meet us, they should meet Jesus. They should meet the character of God. They should meet, come into contact. My God. So if you don't know God yet, Jesus. then when you meet someone who says they do, you should be meeting him. My Lord. So I just want to just say that that was confirmation because I didn't know what he was going to say. Lord Jesus. But that is what the Lord told me. That was my response. And that person said, you know what? You right. Wow. We don't have to fear about what we used to know. But God keeps on telling me and speaking to me, it's pivot. 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 That's the word. And move with me. Move with me. That's the word. Move with me. Because I'm I'm never caught by surprise. He already knew what was gonna happen. Wow. And if he allowed a virus, it's only because he already is a, a, ahead of the devil. He, he's, he's already stomped his head. He's already there. So we don't have to worry. All we got to do is become closer to him, Jesus. hear from him that the Lord may, I mean, was already said, Lord, touch our ears that we yes. may hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. And that is what we need to do. We wow. need to draw nigh unto thee, that he yeah. may draw nigh unto us, right. that we may know how to move. And stop relying on what we used to know as church, because surely God is doing something new. Wow. Can I steal that word pivot? I might want to preach that. You can. I like, like that. that. I like that All pivot right. word. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read one more scripture. That's preaching. I'm going to read one more scripture. I'm almost done. <laughs> Second Corinthians 1, verse, verse uh, 8 and 9. Second Corinthians 1, 8 and 9. Paul says, we want you to be, we don't want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. But this has happened so that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. Hmm. Wow. We got everybody asking why COVID has happened, why we kicked out the church. And I'm going to go with what Paul said. Paul said that he was persecuted. He was going through hell because God was trying to get him to rely on the power of God and not on flesh. Mm. So in COVID, the answer is, why did it happen? The answer is that it's time to rely on the power of God. It's time to get into the flow of the spirit and not and stop relying on ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's the best answer that I can give according to the scriptures. God let it happen because we were slacking too much. We was operating in us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we was we was entertaining the yeah. people in the pulpit. That's right. So now That's God right. is saying, okay, keep doing it now because now you're on virtual church. You ain't got all the music no more. Mm -hmm. You ain't get you ain't got this, that, and the third. So That's now right. you're exposed. That's right. That's right. And so now Amen. everybody's exposed on Amen. who they are. Who really got the power of God? Who, got who knows who he is? Jesus. Who's sitting in power right on the camera with no music? Who got it and who don't? Mm -hmm. So Paul said that. It's time to rely on the power of who God is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not by it's not by power nor by might, but by, by the spirit. spirit. But by the spirit, mm -hmm. that's where the power is. Mm -hmm. The power to draw souls into the kingdom is, is going to be done by the spirit of the Lord. Yes. And so that's why this pandemic is here. Rely on the power of God, not your intellectual knowledge, 
not theology, not philosophy, not, your, not the power of reason, not even your emotions. But Paul said, I'm convinced. <laughs> I had an experience with Christ. This is how he was convinced. He, he knew who he was. He had an experience with the resurrected Savior. And so I just want to encourage everybody tonight to get in the flow of the Spirit. And babe, can you pray yourself? All right. You know, you're a prayer warrior. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you tonight. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would that you would shower down a fresh anointing on yes, us, oh God, that we would see you for who you really are, oh God, that everything that was once old, we pray that you would put new wine in the wineskins tonight, oh God. We pray that we have a fresh outlook yes. on what it is that you want us to do, not what we want us to do, but what you, you want, want to us do, to do. God. Lord, we pray that not our will, but yours be done. We pray for the exchange tonight. Lord, we come with an exchange on our minds tonight, an exchange of our hearts, oh God, exchange of our our minds, oh God, yes, we come with another yes tonight. We say yes to your yes, will. To your we will, say God. yes to your way. We pray, Lord Jesus, for every family and every person that's watching, every person that got on the feed tonight. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the coming together of the saints tonight, Jesus. oh God. We thank you for those, oh God, who are looking for you, oh God, who are looking for an answer that you are beginning to speak to that, oh God. We pray that people leave encouraged today, encouraged. that we are encouraged by the words that went forth today, but we spoke the word, oh God. You said your word is life, oh God. That yes, it is Jesus. truth, oh God. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you do, for you are a way maker. You are a miracle worker. You are a promise keeper. Lord, we thank Thank you, Lord Jesus, because you have kept us all year, oh God. You have kept us in our right mind, oh God. You have kept our body intact, oh God. Even if we were afflicted, Lord, you came back and you gave us even more, oh God. We thank you, oh God, because you are never caught by surprise. And you said, oh God, that if we call on your name, oh God, all we have to do is call on you, Lord Jesus. All we have to do is lean on you, rely on you, trust in you, oh God. Not our own intellect, but trust in you, oh God. We thank you. You, Lord, that you are infinite, oh God. We thank you that you are still doing a new thing. You have more for us to do, oh God. I pray that we would rely on you, that we would Jesus. talk to you, that we would commune with you. I pray for intimate relationships to burst forth, oh God. I thank you today, Lord, for you are glorious, you are mighty, oh God, and we are looking, we sit in expectation for what you will do. Jesus. We sit in it, oh God, because we know that you have called more out of us all. That if you drew us here, oh God, it's because you want to speak. You have something new to do in us. Lord, we say, do it again, Jesus. Do it again, oh God. Do it again, oh God. Do it again, Lord. You said you like when we go ahead and sit in expectation. You show Lord, up, oh God. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We honor you. We give you the praise. We call this year blessed oh god Jesus. to come and we thank you because we were blessed we still here we thank you Jesus. we give you the glory the honor and the praise amen 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 man amen amen, amen. hallelujah amen amen wow jesus well i wanted to run well, I literally wanted to get up but i got so much going on right here i just <laughs> i wanted to run amen <laughs> Amen. <laughs> wow. Amen. Oh my God. Ohio. Mm, yes, my God. Ohio. Oh, Florida. Okay. Oh, Maryland. Birmingham. Birmingham. Amen. Um. Wow. Um. Wow. I, I, I'm not gonna say much tonight. I'm gonna I'm gonna let Val um have have the, the minutes that we have. Um. But but I I, I want to say this. Um, God does nothing by accident. Absolutely. God does everything on purpose, for purpose. Everybody that is here on Zoom that's being relayed to Facebook and being relayed to YouTube, uh, this is not an accident. It may be surprising to us, but just like you told Jeremiah, I knew you before you was formed. So he knew this was going to be happening before you was even formed. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to say a few words. I'm going to let Val say this. Uh, if I had to line everything up with, with, with all these uh, pastors and uh, 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 ministers and uh, deacons said tonight, I, I had to line it up this way. Uh, 
Pastor Ray said this. He said, uh, nothing can rescue you. Nothing can rescue you. But then he said, he died for us all. He died for us all. And Minister Fran said this. She said, you can't take him for granted. You cannot take our, my Lord and Savior for granted. And then Pastor Rick said this, something's coming. Something's coming. Something's coming. And then Reverend Coates, even though he was in the beginning, I would end it with what he said. We made it. We made it. I do all my thank yous later, but I'm going to let Minister Val uh, I'll speak uh, for these 10 minutes. Amen. Listen, so much has been said on this Zoom tonight. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I don't have words to express. I'm telling I'm so full, but I'm going to just, I'm just going to speak just on a little bit of what God gave me. And the, the thing that I, what I've been standing on is I'm alive because there's more. Yeah. He didn't let me die. Mm. It's not by accident that I, we're still alive. Mm -hmm and together because there is more mm -hmm. um we're still alive there's the there's a next there's a next year a next day mm -hmm. because god has planned and purpose and what we've been standing on is jeremiah 29 11 that god said i know the plans i have for you so god got plans for us the reason why we're still physically here mm -hmm. he has an assignment he has a purpose for us mm -hmm. so we got to continue to keep pressing we got to continue to keep pushing. We got to continue to keep praying because there is more to be done in the kingdom of God. Yes. And I want to, I want us to go to Lamentations 3. Lamentations 3, verse 22. And I want to encourage you though that are on Zoom, those that are watching us by Facebook. I want you to hear the words of the Lord in Lamentations 3, verse 22 through verse 24. And even though before I read that, you know, we've had so many things to happen in 2020 and just like um pastor trina said we can talk about all those things that happened that were bad you know we've had some setbacks but god has set some things up for us as well we've had some uncertain some uncertainties but at the same time we've had some certainties some some things that we know that god said is going to happen and we can stand on his word and trust and believe that he's going to take care of us cuz he's in control you know we've had some dark days we've had some 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 dark hours we've had some quarantine but god used that quarantine as deacon larry said to bring families back together to bring unity back into the household because guess what everybody was ripping and running yeah. and wasn't nobody taking time for what needs to be had time be taken for so god said listen i'm gonna sit you down and put you back in your wife will place men hello somebody put the men back into the put the men back into the home the wives back into the home where they have to cook and do and take care of the children because we just do we just all over the place so God set that thing up so he can put us back into place. We've had some losses on jobs and deaths, but guess what? We've had some birth to happen. Hallelujah. January 11th, I had a grandbaby, my first one. Glory be to God. Not only that, but God, you know, God restored, God birthed some things to some people during this pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know, God opened up some doors for people that didn't know that they had that on the inside of them. And, and things begin to transpire in their lives. People have had losses on their jobs. People have had increases on their job. So this whole thing was God control. And all our hope is in him. We can't look at the bad. We can't look at anything but what the word said. We got to stand on the word. But in Lamentations 3 and 22, it said, the unfailing love of the Lord never ends. By his mercies, we have been kept from complete destruction. And I'm reading out the New Living Translation. Even though this thing has happened on the earth, the word of God said, by his mercy, we have been kept from complete destructions. We're alive because there's more. It ain't by accident that we're still sitting here talking. It's because God had a plan and a purpose for us. Amen. We got new mercies coming. We got new grace. We got new opportunities and new favor that God wants to impart in our lives even now, as Pastor Ray said, we ain't got to wait till 12 o'clock midnight. We ain't got to wait till 2021. It can happen right now. 
those new mercies, those new favors. And verse 23 said, great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each day. You can add uh, each year if you want to, because guess what? Tomorrow is another day. It's just another year. But his mercy is new every day. I say to myself, and you ought to speak this to yourself. I, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. I'm not hoping in the stimulus checks. I'm not hoping if it's going to come or not. I'm not going to hope if my job going to continue to stay open. I'm not going to hope if we get back into the building. But my hope is in Christ. That's where our hope lies. Is in Christ Jesus. We got a whole we got a whole step fast to the word of God. Even the more. Even the more. We didn't know what was going to happen in 2020 when we celebrated Watch Night on 2019. We're celebrating Watch Night currently right now in 2020. We don't know what 2021 is going to hold, but we know that our hope is in him. We got to stand on the word of God. Amen. So we got to continue to push. We got to continue to keep pressing. We got to keep praying. We got to stand on the word of God because he has a plan for us. And I want to give you one more thing. In the book of Ecclesiastes 3, there's a time to live and there's a time to die. There's a time to pluck up. There's time to plant. There was 28 times in Ecclesiastes 3 that he imparted something in our life about a season of. Yes. But there was never a time where he said in that, in that passage, there was a time to quit. We can't give up now. We Amen. can't throw in the towel. We got to keep pressing. We got to keep pushing. We got to hold steadfast mm -hmm. to the word of God. Everything else going to fail but the word. Mm -hmm. Everything going to perish but the word. Everything, just like Pastor Ray said, the, there ain't no choir singing, ain't no drums beating, ain't no musicians playing, but the oh, word is still word. going forth yes. greater than ever before. I stand on that without a doubt. 2020, the word of God, God allowed this thing to happen for his word to get forth for those people that may not ever walk into a church, but they're on social media. Yes. They can get the word on social media. So there won't be no excuse on excuse that you didn't hear the word of God. Mm -hmm. There will be no excuse that he didn't give you an opportunity to come to him because everybody declaring the word of God said, listen, he is the way, the truth, and the light. No man coming to the father, but by him. That's right. So my words for those people that are watching, no matter what you have expired or no matter what you have um, experienced, in 2020, know that it's going to take the word of God to keep you even in 2021 and for years to come. Just like Pat, I won't get, I won't forget this, Pastor Ray. You said a new year can't rescue us. It's going to take Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, that's right. If you don't know Jesus, you can wake up in the morning at 1201. And if you don't know Jesus, guess what? You're in the same situation because the pandemic is still here. And your job, this is a weekend. If you ain't got no job, you may not have one on Monday. So guess what? You got to know Jesus. That's who going to keep you. That's, right. That's who going to sustain us even in this time. Mm -hmm. So I want us just to be encouraged. Know that the word of God is going to stand and everything else is going to fail. Right. We got to trust God. Keep our eyes on the prize and we got a whole steadfast to the hope which hope is in christ jesus amen amen, amen. so i'm gonna ask pastor harris if he's gonna pray or are you gonna let pastor rick pray um i uh, i want to say something right okay now. um when you read um lamentations three if you go down to the 20 what was last i went i stopped at the 24th if, read the 25th verse. The Lord is wonderfully good to those who wait for him and seek him. Amen. When she, when she read, she stopped at 24. Uh, I said, God, take us a little bit further. Yes. You know, a lot of times we, 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 we stop because we think we've got uh, what God was giving us. But sometimes that, that that's a message right there. Sometimes we got to go a little bit further. You got to keep not pushing. saying what she, what my wife and uh, my minister uh, uh, said was not correct. It was totally correct mm -hmm. because it was the word of God. But sometimes we got to go a little bit gotta further. Got to keep pushing. 
Um, 2020, I'll never forget, we was at uh, True Love Delivers Church. We had watch night service. And um, we had we had glass on at 2020. Everybody said, we're going to have perfect vision. We're going to see this. We, we didn't see half of what came toward us in 2020. <laughs> it, it took me by surprise. I had COVID. The first five, six days, I thought I had this thing licked. I was like, God, you know, people complain about this. I know people were dying, people's in the hospital, but God, I got this thing lit. Oh, but Brian, that seventh or eighth day? My God. Oh, I thought I was going to die. But oh, God. But God. But God. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know how I I'm made it home. because there's more. I don't know how I made it down that hill out of Trustville to Walgreens to get my prescription. But when I got, when God brought me back to the house, when I crawled up the steps, and fell on the floor. And when I cried like a baby. My God. Yes. Yeah. I, Thank you, Lord God. I cried like a baby because yes. I thought I was going to die. I knew the Lord. Yes. But I said to myself, God, I can't handle this. I could not handle this. It attacked every part of my body. Yes. I'm not giving the devil any praise. That's right. But I'm letting the devil know you couldn't have me. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God had already claimed me Thank on you, the Lord. cross. Thank you, Jesus. COVID, COVID hung on the cross. My God. Thank you, Jesus. But we got to see that. Thank we got to see no matter what we went through in 19, what we going through in 20, it's already hung on the cross. Don't try to take that Thank thing you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. It don't fit you no more. It's a jacket that don't fit you no more. It's a shirt that's out of style. Don't try to wear it in 21 because it don't fit you no Jesus. more. Jesus. My God. People ask me, where did you get it from? Who gave it to you? That's not important, but I know who healed me. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I know who... I know who brought me through. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Paul, you also. Paul said something in, in Romans. He said, my desire, more than anything I want in this world, is for people to be saved. Yes. We take this thing. So right now, I'm sitting right here in, in, in our living room. In Birmingham, Alabama, and they're shooting like crazy outside. Yes, they've been shooting since uh, uh, twelve o'clock this afternoon. Why? What are they celebrating? My God, they not celebrating what we celebrate. But you know why? Because they don't know anything else to celebrate. But Paul says he said, "My desire above everything." Paul, like you said, he was in prison. He was talked about. He was whipped. He was beaten. He was shipped. All this thing happened to Paul. But Paul said, I still got a desire. And it's for the ones that don't know him. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to leave that right there. But I, 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 want, I want Pastor Rick to come to us right now. And, 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 and give us a, a sinner's prayer. Bring somebody to Christ that don't know who he is. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. We just worship you right now, dear Heavenly Father. We just worship you, dear Heavenly Father. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. This whole time that we've been on this, this meeting, dear Heavenly Father, it's been giving tools to people who already know you how, how to have the victory and to encourage people to know that when they know you, they already have the victory. They don't have to wait for the victory, but there's people right now to Heavenly Father, right now on Facebook and YouTube who are our friends that we love each and every one. We have a heart. And as, as Paul said, like Pastor Horace said, we have a desire to see people snatched from the pits of hell, the Heavenly Father. And if that's you, if that's you listening to this meeting right now, the Word of God says that all you have to do is say one word to cry out. This, this as, as Pastor Horace said, it's a sinner's prayer. What I, I like to put it at is, this is my call. 
This is my call to you, dear Heavenly Father, for help. We need you. We need you. We have gotten to the last knot in our rope. We don't want to be, we don't want to have stress and panic and fear or anything else rule us anymore. So if that's you, I want to lead you in a prayer. And I want to, I want you to just take some time out, quiet yourself and just take some time and, and repeat after what I say from your heart. Dear God, I am so sorry for trusting in anything else. I wanna give my life to you. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son and that he hung on that cross for every single sin that I've ever committed or will ever commit. Every disease that could ever be brought into somebody's life or every future disease or sickness hung on that cross. I want to trust in you. I give my life to you. Be my savior, my Lord. I give everything to you, to Heavenly Father. And I lay it at your feet. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. The word of God says that the heavens are screaming and shouting right now. And they're cheering and they're, 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 they're a whole ovation picture. The whole heaven is just looking down right now. And they're so excited because you are now a child of God. I don't want it to stop there. If you know any one of us who are on this screen, reach out to us. Because we have not only a desire to see you saved, which just happened, but we have a desire to mentor you and to disciple you and not to leave you hanging. We're going to get you in the word. We're going to love on you. And you are going to be able to turn what the devil meant for destruction into victory. Through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We, we, thank, we thank Pastor Rick for that. Uh, it's phenomenal. It, it, was, it was awesome. Amen. Yes. Um, let, let me say this. I know um, someone probably looked at this and said, man, it ain't like it ain't like so-and-so, like these mega churches did it. That ain't the way God wanted it done. This is the way God wanted it done right here. You know, we ain't, we ain't got to wait till we get into big mega churches and have the orchestra behind us and an all-star lineup and everything. You know, hey, we're in the forefront. Absolutely. God used us. God used you all tonight. Thank you. Amen. I'm, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do my thank yous, but I, I want to let everybody know this: that every speaker that was speaking tonight, uh, their information uh, will be on True Love Deliverance Church web well, uh, Facebook page. Amen. If you need more, I'm sorry. If you need more information, if you uh, DM us directly, Amen. we can get you in contact with these ministers. If you desire to uh, Amen. to talk to any of them uh, uh, about their ministry, we'll be Amen. more than glad to pass that information on to you. Amen. Um, a lot of you all, a lot of people in my church and a lot of my uh, Friends know that uh, I don't follow mess. Uh, I'm not on Facebook uh, trying to follow every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Amen. But I, I promise you one thing: the people that you saw on this on this broadcast tonight, 
uh, trust me, you can follow them. Amen. Amen. And they will Amen. give they will give you sound doctrine. Amen. Amen. Uh, they won't make your ears itch. Let me put it that way. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I put it that way. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to hold everybody, but I want to I want to do my I'm going to do my thank yous. Uh, I want to thank Pastor William Coates from Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church in Marbury, Maryland. Amen. Amen. Uh, my Marine friend. Amen. Um, I want to thank uh, Minister Francine and Deacon Vince Larry from True Love Deliverance Church. And he got that bottle up to his mouth mm -hmm. <laughs> from True Love Deliverance Church <laughs> Incorporated in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, I want to thank Pastors Rick and Trina Frost uh, from Daring to Believe Ministries in Port St. Lucie, Florida. And Pastors uh, Ray and KB Gaines from Alive Church International in South Euclid, Ohio. You were all phenomenal. You were all phenomenal. And I can make you this promise. And I don't make a promise that I can't keep. I, I, I don't want nobody to make a promise to me that I can't keep. If you're ever in Birmingham, well, Minister Friend, you live in Birmingham. You, you, you preach anyway. Uh, but if any of you, uh, Pastor Ray, Pastor KB, uh, Pastor Rick, uh, Pastor Trina, and my my, uh, my buddy Reverend Coates, he already knows, if you're ever in Birmingham, Please stop you. by and see us because our pulpit will be open to you. Amen. I, I promise you that. Amen. Amen. You were all phenomenal. Um, I just want to thank you all once again for, I know it was kind of short notice, but as always, look what God did. God, God did, did it. it. God did it. Yeah. God did it. God did it. God did it. We Amen. Want, we want y'all to be blessed. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your new year. For those that are watching, we want you all to enjoy your new year. Tomorrow is a new day. Mm -hmm. And those that accepted Christ as, his Lord and, as your Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. this is a new journey. Yes. This is the best journey. This is the only journey, y'all, mm -hmm. that where this journey where you can live to live again. Amen. So just continue to be encouraged. Know that we love you and just be safe and God bless. Amen. God bless. Amen. Amen. Y'all have a good night. Let me take y'all off mute. Thank, Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastors. <laughs> love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all. Those that are too. watching us on Facebook. You too. God bless y'all. Love y'all. Thank you. Have so a good God night. God bless you all. Bye. Powerful. God bless you. God bless you. Mm, awesome. 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 You recorded.